All right, welcome back. We got our Tesla Q3 earnings video. So this week, Tesla reported their earnings. I just got done listening to the call and a pretty good quarter for Tesla as to be expected with the record delivery numbers. So we're gonna go over some numbers, we'll look at some visuals, and then we'll finish up looking up, uh, looking at the chart. So for Q3, they did record a 12% increase year over year of revenue of 28 billion dollars so that was a one and a half billion dollar beat their earnings per share was 50 cents that missed by six cents and their operating margin is down to six percent so that is down a little bit year over year big news here their free cash flow increased almost 50 percent year over year to four billion dollars a lot of that is coming from the energy business and um, they do have a large amount of cash on hand of $36 billion. So balance sheet is in a really good spot here uh, for Tesla. And when we look at the income statement graphic here, again, mostly auto sales, um, 20 billion in auto sales, that's up 8% year over year. Regulatory credits is down 44% year over year. Again, we've talked about the credits it's more of an incentive for people to buy than it is um, a benefit to Tesla's bottom line. So we'll see how much the uh, regulatory credits going away will eat into people buying Tesla vehicles. Um, energy generation and storage is up 44% year over year to three and a half billion dollars. And services continues to grow 25% year over year to almost three and a half billion. So these two small pieces of their business are starting to continue to grow and uh, become a meaningful contributor to their income. Um, net profit, one and a half billion dollars. So looking good here. Uh, again, production was 410,000 vehicles with almost 500,000 delivered. And when we look at the gross margin, automotive is down from uh, in 2020, it was up at 27%. We're down to 15% operating margin or gross margin on the vehicles. Services is ticked up to 11% margin and the energy continuing to grow here at 31% and these mega packs are a hot commodity for these data centers. These data centers want these big mega packs to be a backup and to help them um, have flexible energy use and also energy storage for the data centers. So if there is an outage, um, they are not going to go down for very long. All right, production, we talked about it. A nice rebound here after the big drop that they had in Q1. Um, so nice ramp up for the rest of the year after a tough Q1. So we'll see what happens moving forward without those regulatory credits. And energy deployment, crushing it. Just wonderful chart here. And here is a look at the competition with BYD. So doing a good job of catching up to BYD again. They, uh, both companies are doing very, very well, but Tesla had a big drop off in Q1 and they're doing a good job of trying to catch up to BYD. Um, so some of the big topics that they talked about in this earnings call was the pay package vote that's coming up here soon. So I will be doing uh, my vote today. Um, so if you're a Tesla shareholder, make sure you vote before uh, November 5th on what you want to do for this pay package and there's a couple board seats that uh, they're looking to um, renew some people to stay on the board so with this pay package there's some wild incentives in here which if you're a tesla shareholder um, to me it makes sense to vote for this because if you know yeah a billion dollars to elon sounds like a lot but um, if they hit these metrics it's going to be a big big win for shareholders so here are some of the metrics that they are looking for for this trillion dollar pay package. First is a $2 trillion market cap. Tesla's market cap is currently $1.4 trillion. And then it goes all the way up to six and a half trillion. So for Tesla to get up to six and a half trillion, that's a $2,000 share price, something like that. As there is also some operational milestones like vehicles delivered, 20 million. FSD subscriptions, a million robots delivered, a million robo taxis in commercial operation, and then a lot of uh, revenue uh, metrics here as well. So we want these metrics to be hit, and if that is hit, Elon should earn his money because shareholders are gonna win big as well. 
So that's coming up here um, within the next month that vote will be um, finalized. All right, so some of the pros and the cons here for Tesla, the energy growth looking very, very strong, continuing to be very, very strong. We do have the new full self-driving update, which is out now, and the RoboTaxi progress. So on the call, they talked a lot about the RoboTaxi rollout and um, very, um, I would say, good news that we haven't heard any bad stories because if there was a crash or something going wrong it would be uh, all over the news and people will be talking about it but RoboTaxi has been rolling out in major cities and we haven't heard anything that's a good thing and the Optimus update in Q1 they're gonna have the version 3 announced and we will see what that looks like the free cash flow we talked about it and then they did talk a good amount about the next gen AI 15 AI five chip and that is claimed to be 40 times more efficient than ai4 and this is going to be manufactured by tsmc and samsung in america so that's going to be a big big deal and it was very interesting when they were talking about this they're going to continue to use nvidia chips as well but making their own chip they're going to be very very efficient because nvidia has to make chips to suit all their customers whereas tesla can make a chip that is just for them and for their needs. So that's where they're gonna get a lot more efficiency out of those chips. And it'll be very interesting to see how those perform. So some of the bear case, some of the cons here. Automotive margins falling like a rock. 15% auto margin without the credits and BYD is still in the lead for EVs. A lot of operating expenses. 50% year over year due to re research and development, stock comp, restructuring, and legal cost. They make cars. It's an expensive business to make cars. Um, so I don't see that going away anytime soon. They are very efficient, and we will see if they can kind of get that back on track over time. Um, Cybertruck. Cybertruck, I would say it's safe to say that it's a flop. It is lagging the F-150 and the Silverado EV. Um, I still see Cybertrucks around, but they only sold 5,400 units in Q3. It's an expensive vehicle, and it is a, um, I would say it's a certain individual that's going to buy those vehicles, and there's just not a lot of them out there. So we'll see what happens next with Cybertruck. Uh, we already talked about the credit dropping, and um, full self-driving monetization is still small. So only 12% of the f uh, fleet is paying for full self-driving, uh, so we'll see what that looks like down the road. I think full self-driving will really take off, and Elon mentioned this on the call. It'll sell itself when you can have a commercial of somebody reading a book while their car is driving, but right now you still have to have your hand on the wheel, eyes forward, uh, but once we get to full autonomy, full self-driving will sell like hotcakes, and every Tesla that's out there will be able to instantly um, purchase full self-driving and I think a lot of people will also go seek a Tesla for that if you can be in your car while it drives you around and you can do something else in the car boom I think we'll see a nice uptick in Tesla sales um, so some of the short-term catalysts RoboTaxi expansion they're targeting 8 to 10 cities by the end of the year and also full autonomy without the uh, without the guy in the driver's seat for safety, they're going to take him out in Austin by the end of the year. So we'll see what that looks like. Mega Pack 4 launch, that's coming this year as well. And the AI, <coughs> AI5, we'll see how that continues to roll out. More long term, we've got the Optimus, the CyberCab, the Energy Scale, and um, obviously the chip strategy. So that is about it for the updates here. Um, we kind of knew what the numbers were going to be like, and they were they were solid. Um, but the big question is going to be, where do we go from here? Because um, we did have some pull forward in Q3 with the credits dropping off. So looking at the chart, we're just chopping sideways here. We haven't gone anywhere since this big leg up. Uh, I would say this is pretty constructive, that we're just kind of hanging out here. There's not a huge selling pressure to get back under 400 bucks. Um, so that is good news. I did put on the chart here um, the two trillion dollar market cap. That's the first target for the new pay package. That will make Tesla a six hundred dollar company. 
and then to get all the way up to five trillion we got to zoom way out here um, that's up to fifteen hundred dollars per share so that does seem like a ways away but two trillion dollars does seem like it could be very much achievable within the next year or so um, so we will see but um, as far as q1 goes the next quarter q4 and q1 um, not sure this is kind of what i've got planned out for tesla we either break above all-time highs and make our move up again or we uh, kind of sell off a little bit before we make our move to all-time highs um, towards the second half of next year so this to me seems like the more likely scenario where we kind of consolidate here for a little bit more pull back a little bit and then um, second half of next year the fundamentals continue to improve we get some updates on optimus energy and then we get above all-time highs that is kind of what i would bet happens for the share price um but yeah that is it for tesla i'd say this is probably a b b plus quarter um, the other bets that they're working on do seem to be very very promising there's not a lot of um i would say there's not a lot of uh setbacks in that department and the automotive business had a nice uptick but we will see if that will continue without the regulatory credits they did announce their lower price vehicles that they came out they're just a uh, cheaper version of the model y model 3 we'll see what the demand looks like for that and uh, we will see how else they can be uh, with lending and financing how else they can entice people to buy their higher end products um, but i don't see the Cybertruck taking off um, but other than that pretty good quarter here for tesla and we will see what they have to say um, for the shareholder vote so that's going to be the next big catalyst coming up here within a week and we will talk about that when it comes all right everybody have a great weekend and peace out